Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. I'm Joel. And we are here to wrap up the month of May in reading and all the fun booky stuff. All had that. A, had a good month, so. Yeah. 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 It was interesting. Jamie's probably, doing well. She is doing well. You can hear that. She Somebody is uh, barbecuing in his driveway around the bend from us. How dare he? I know. How dare he? But it was a good, good reading month. A little bit of like stress, anxiety as Jamie continues to recover. But we pulled through and had a good reading month. I think. Yeah. And uh, we did a lot of the same stuff too. So we did, which well, is I read stuff. It's like you have to read this. <laughs> well, I mean, I wanted to read it anyway. I just accelerated it in my pile of possibilities, and I finally finished a book that we were supposed to read in February, and you finished. <laughs> I did, I did the audio and I travel, so it made it easier. So. I finally caught up to you. Yes. <laughs> so it's going to be uh, interesting to talk about these books since we have so many in common. Yeah. And uh, let's go. I managed, I, I've blanked on how many I managed to read. Give me a second and I'll count. How many did seven, you read? Seven. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I had my first DNF of the year. Wow. So uh, do you want to go first or do you want, do you want me to go first? I can jump in. Do it. So I did Empire of Stone and Ice by Betty Levy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a kind of an Arctic book. Uh, most of you know that I enjoy doing Arctic readings. What's his thing? Um, it was really good. I um, It took place in like the late 1800s, early 1900s, and they're doing an exploration, but north this time. I usually do south, mm -hmm. but they went north this time. And um, again... They get stuck in ice and destroys the boat, and they're stuck on this, like, ledge of ice for years and years. Why people did not learn boats back then did not go through ice. I would be so stressed out. <laughs> yes. Um, it didn't have uh, the happiest ending as most of my books have been, mm -hmm. uh, but I really like Buddy Levy's writing. Um, I did another one of his, The Labyrinth of Ice, and I loved you it. You did love that one. And um, so I did this one. I really liked it. It's good, um, but it's a little darker and a little sad. So, yeah. but um, I enjoyed it. But dark and sad fun. kind of describes us. Yeah. <laughs> no, it does not. <laughs> My first. I think this may have carried over from April. I don't remember at this point. But it was City of Night by John Rishi. I actually listened to the audio. But I have had a copy of this for ages. I'm trying to hold it so the light doesn't like wildly hit it. <laughs> but uh, this is a queer classic. It's a brick of a book. Um, I liked it. I think it's, it's really long. And I think the audio ended up helping me because it does start to feel like it's dragging a little bit. Um, but the audio helped me power through. I know a lot of people in the queer TBR tackle. I'll have information about that down below. Um struggled to get through because it is so long and because this is a book that doesn't necessarily have a plot it it, it the way it's described is kind of that um I'm, I'm completely blanking on the term but where, where it just it flows freely with your thoughts that's how it's described but i didn't really think that's necessarily what it is a stream of consciousness that's it i didn't think that's because it's there isn't really a plot and it does kind of just flow with the character but he it's not like um, Duck's Newburyport, where it's just flowing with the person's thoughts. Um, it, it is segmented into sections, and it's episodic, and yeah. So, I, But anyway, I, I'm glad I finally got around to reading it. It is a classic. And um, it's it's difficult as well, because it deals with a lot of like self-loathing and discrimination and things like that. And, you know, not all of it has aged well, but I'm glad I finally got around to reading it. So that was my first book that I finished in the month of May. Nice. What do you got next? Uh, my second one was a uh, big anticipation for me. I really, really was excited about reading this. And um, we had to order it from Queer Lit yes. in uh, the UK mm -hmm. because it was not released here in the US yet. Which is annoying. But Becoming Ted by Matt Cain. Yes. Uh, Matt Cain also did The Secret Life of Albert Antwistle. I think it's right here. Right there. Right there. Right there. Yeah. Which we <laughs> both loved. Um, it was kind of a gift for us from the bro Erica, Erica, the, the Broken, broken Spine, spine yeah. uh, when Guinness passed. Yeah. And so we loved it so much we got this. And uh, again, did not fail. I loved it. It's about a man who's 
um, hu husband left him after like 20 years yeah. and he is kind of like down and needed to like reinvent himself and he followed his passions and his dream of becoming a drag queen yes which is very fitting for today's topics yes too um, and it was but there's a lot going on too in the background yeah so um, not all happy um, a lot of twists, a lot of turns, some a lot triggers, a lot of a um, lot of triggers. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. It kind of hit me really hard in a lot of places. But um, he did follow his dream, and um, oh, and the, there's a little scrappy um, terrier in there, and an Airedale was in there too. So yeah. that was actually fun. So if you don't know, an Airedale looks like a Welsh terrier, but it's double the size. Yeah. Um, and Jamie is a Welsh Terrier. So a lot of the time we'll be walking Jamie and people will be like, oh, is that an Airedale puppy? And we're like, no, it's no, not. Sorry. It's not an Airedale. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as soon as I finish, I go, Greg, you have to do this book. Yeah, so I did. That's did. actually, I read it later in the month. It was my one, two, three, fourth book of the month. Okay. Um, but yes, I read it as well. And I really liked it as well. I think I still prefer The Secret Life of Albert Entwistle. Yeah. Um, but this is really good. And um, I think one of the things that uh, kind of comes out as the story develops is uh, Ted is initially heartbroken that his relationship has ended. And I don't think this is a spoiler because even right no, there in yeah. the beginning, it starts kind of hinting at yeah. this. But as he reflects on the relationship, he realizes that it was kind of toxic and his uh, former husband really did not treat him well at all. He did it not physically abusive but no. definitely psychologically abusive and that's why he has, has never pursued his dreams before so yes um but outside of that relationship there are some other triggers in here that yeah. go along with the storyline um i really love this book yeah. i think it's actually my number one for the read this you year. did say that yes yeah so loved it yeah, uh, it's a really good book, and it was very sweet. Uh, all the same vibes and energy of Secret Life of Albert Entwistle. So again, uh, it's unfortunate that this one was not released in the United States, but yeah. we managed to get a copy. Yeah. Um, and if um, I know the people have concerns with like physical books, but the print in this book is really large, um, and I, the margins are pretty big, so it, it it's not a problem. I think. Yeah. So I'm not a big book reader. I just don't like holding something, but I actually muscled through this. Yeah, and it was actually a quick read um, hmm. for me to read in bed. So it was a very quick read for yeah. both of us. Actually, I think so. we both flew through it. It was funny though because when I would pick it up and start to read it, I could tell Joel was kind of looking at me like. Like, what part are you at? Because yeah. <laughs> there were a lot of parts in here that I just like, oh, God, when he gets there, I got to yeah. know. Um, so if you're not familiar with Matt Cain, um, great queer writer. Yes. And um, love both of his books. She has another one called The Madonna of Bolton. That's the one you're going to do. I'm going to probably do during Pride Month. Yeah. And, yeah, definitely, like, cinnamon bun vibe, but with substance. Like, it doesn't feel like yeah. fluff to read his books. Yeah, so. definitely not fluff. Yeah. All right, so that was your next. My next one was actually the one that I finally finished. It was The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. <laughs> so we were supposed to read this together in February. In February, Jamie was diagnosed with her nasal tumor, and you managed to finish the book, but I completely dropped off and had to take a break. And circle back to it. And I did in May and finally finished it. And I'm glad I uh, got back and finished it. I did film my deep dive on The Grapes of Wrath. I'll link it down below. I always want to say that. <laughs> and the point, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. You should try it sometime. <laughs> um, I, liked, I loved it. I thought it was really good. I did too. It yeah. was actually number two or three on my list for the year. Um, most of you know I'm trying to work through some classics, mm -hmm. and it was one of the classics I loved. I really enjoyed getting into the story about the Dust Bowl, mm -hmm. and uh, my family is from Kansas and Oklahoma, yeah. and I grew up there, so I didn't know much about it. So uh, I've enjoyed it. Um, mm -hmm. Hannah. Oh, Kristen Hannah. Kristen Hannah. Uh, the Four the Wins. wins. Uh, it's up there somewhere. Right up here, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, is another really good um, historical novel yeah. that goes in this. I liked them both, but this was really gritty. This is really dark. good. Yeah, and it is a Pulitzer book, which is why I have the deep dive about it. Um, I'm glad I finally got around to reading it. I had only read John Steinbeck's shorter, more California-centric books. Obviously, this one has a huge part in California. Mm -hmm. But I had read um, The Red Pony, Cannery Row, 
of End of Mice and Men. I don't think I had read any others, but I'd never read one of his larger books. Yeah. So I'm glad I finally got around to it. And I'm fl- glad I finally got to this one. I think last year I did Of Mice and Men. But and I liked it. You did. Yeah, yeah, I remember. That's a good book. Um, but you know how s- this is funny. How This is how stacked the year is. I think The Grapes of Wrath is currently in number five on my Ooh. best of the year so far. And by the way, at the end of June, we will be filming our best of the year so far. So you'll find out more about it. But I think this is number five. We'll get to my number one in this video. Ooh. Uh, but yeah, so I finally caught up to Joel and finished The Grapes of Wrath, <laughs> and I liked it. Now I need to watch the movie. Yes. So we need to do that. What do you got? All right, my next one um, was Mastering the Art of French Murder by Colleen Cambridge. This um, sounded so fun when you told me about it. It sounded so fun. It had a little bit of play, so the title's a play on hmm. Julia Child's uh, The Master of French Cooking. Uh, but it's a French murder. Mm. And um, it was a big letdown. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, it was okay. The I uh, did the audio and the narrator tried to do a Julia Child, which is... And Julia Child's kind of a secondary character in this, but she's kind of best friends of the woman who's solving the murder. Mm. And... Um, it, it's a hard voice to do yeah, and get right. Very hard yeah. to get right. No. I'm not even going to try. <laughs> <laughs> I would sound like Dan Aykroyd in that SNL exactly. skit. Yeah. Um, I was just a little disappointed in the story itself. Um, mm-hmm. It didn't have a lot of... Um, the The characters weren't real relatable. Didn't have a lot of twists and turns. It's just like mm-hmm. you just kept waiting to find out who did the murder. Mm-hmm. And um, even at the end when it's like getting tense, it's just like, is is a letdown. So Meh. I'm sorry. It is a, a part of a series. I'm not going to do the second book. Yeah. So we were excited about because you were going to do the audio first, and I was like, oh, I'm going to save it to my list, and I'll do it when you're done. And then I think when you were about eighty percent in, you said you can take it off your list. <laughs> so, so I did. So I did. But yeah. And that's that. It was okay. Yeah. But I did not love it. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of things we didn't love, <laughs> my next book was The Furrows by Namwali Serpel. I listened to it on audio, and I was kind of thinking you know, we were gearing up for the announcement of the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction, and that was one of the books that I had put in the sort of top tier as options for it. So I thought, if I, you know, if I can manage to read it before the announcement, I will. It is a book that is really heavily about grief, which is why I had stayed away from it for such a long time. And uh, basically, the uh, protagonist of the book loses her brother when she is young. I think she's 12 and he is something like 7 or 8. I I could be wrong about that. Um, And the story of how they lose the brother changes. It's about how the sort of cyclical nature of grief... I think where it really lost me is in the second half. It introduces another character... And I really didn't think that second half worked. I, um, and that's unfortunate. So, you know, it is what it is. And then it turned out to be a moot point because uh, the Pulitzer Prize was announced and it was a tie and that was not one of the books that won. So, yeah, that was my next one. Sweet. Sweet. Uh, so my next, I'm going to do my next two together because they were a series. Um, for the Montana Book Company, uh, one of the prompts is to do two books in a series, mm. and I think it's going to be a three book series. But I did the first two. Yeah, the Vanishing Edge was the first one, and the Unforgiving Place was the second mm. by Claire Kills. Um, kind of a national park murder series. I really enjoyed them. This sounded fun. I'm kind of have them earmarked to yeah. visit later in the year. They were good. Um, they really got into the characters. I really enjoyed the characters. The main character is an FBI agent who was um, injured really bad in the line of duty, and so she had to leave the FBI. But she got on with the Park Services, which is like the FBI of the Park Services. So she's working to solve um, mystery murders and whatnot in the National Park Service. Uh, So she also recruited a Navy SEAL to kind of be her her guide, her um, mastermind of getting through the national parks and hiking and how to get through it. And um, their, their rapport is really, really mm. cute together. There's sexual tension on her side. Of course. Of course. <laughs> but they're not, she's really not acting upon it. And I love that. Not yet, though. <laughs> uh, 
don't you think, think they so. will? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Well, stay tuned stay for book tuned. three. <laughs> I don't think so, but... Mm. Um, and, but, so, and actually, we've had this conversation with Ted Lasso, no spoiler, but because people wanted, really wanted Ted and Rebecca, and it's like, men and women can be friends and yes. not, not get into a physical relationship. So anyway. Yeah. And I like that. I mean, men and women can be friends. I yeah. mean, a lot of my closest friends are dear friends I've not slept with. Yeah. And um, I think it's okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, the first book was about a couple out camping and they disappeared, and they found them in the bottom of a lake. So they had to, like, solve that. And it got a little twisted. It's very Crystal Lake. Very Crystal Lake. <laughs> and uh, the second one was The um, Unforgiving Place. Uh, this couple was trying to have a baby, and so they couldn't. So they went to this mythical place or magical place up in Alaska. Mm -hmm. And they got lost, and they turned up murdered. Like, literally magical? Well... As part of the twist. this, this might have lost my interest. <laughs> no, no, it, it was, it's supposed to be this this natural guru that has oh, like, okay, gotcha. Of how to get them pregnant, and um, mm. so that turned out to be a real twist of all of that. So um, it just had some fun twist. Okay. I liked them. Yeah, I, I'm hoping to maybe get to them later in the year. Yeah, so try the first we'll ones see. if you like it first. Yeah, that's all you can do. Yeah, yeah. Well, those are my two. All right, my next one was Becoming Ted, but we already talked about that, so I'll jump to the one I did after that, which is another one that we have in common for this month. It's Whose Names Are Unknown by Sonora Bab. This is something that a commenter had told me about once we started getting into The Grapes of Wrath in February, because there's an interesting tie here. I really talk about it a lot in my deep dive on The Grapes of Wrath. But basically, just the quick version is, she worked in FSA camps during the Great Depression, so she worked with, or the Dust Bowl specifically. So people who had migrated from the Plains states to California, she was working with them and she was taking notes, and she didn't know it, but her supervisor gave her notes to John Steinbeck, and he, we don't really know to what extent he used them, but he probably used them in his research for the Grapes of Wrath. And then because his book was published first and it was so popular, uh, her publisher shelved this book, and it was not actually published until 2004, which was one year before she died. Um, I really loved this book, and I feel like th it's actually almost a shame that I read both this and The Grapes of Wrath at the same time, because I feel like I like this one better than The Grapes of Wrath, and I feel like the fact that I keep saying that kind of denigrates The Grapes of Wrath, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like I'm constantly just knocking down The Grapes of Wrath. And I'm not. It's a great book. But I do like this one better, I think. Just a little bit. I liked yeah. it better, too. But... Twist. Um, I <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think a little bit is John Steinbeck is this beautiful writer mm. and a lot of beautiful language and words. Mm. And it kind of flowed different. She got down into the knit and yeah. the grit. Yeah. And um, I think... It just, she got into it a little bit harder. It wasn't written as pretty, mm -hmm. but very detailed. And, yeah, um, I agree. So I think that's what I enjoyed about it. I do think Grapes of Wrath was a beautifully written book, but I think this was a really hard hitting book. And, um, yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Probably I, a little bit more. And I think what we were, we were talking the other day, and, um, I think you had said that, uh, you were surprised this one sat with you more than The Grapes yeah. of Wrath. And I think part of that is like John Steinbeck, and again, this is not a criticism because no, it's a great no, book, no. but he's like up there with big ideas and thinking, and she's like down really writing about people and emotion in a very relatable way. So you can come away from the Grapes of Wrath feeling like mentally stimulated, but you come away from whose names are unknown feeling the story in your heart. Yeah. And I I, I loved it. They are both really good books. Yes. I loved them both. I mean, they, they are. are both right up there neck and neck. But yeah. I just felt this had a little different feel and I don't know texture. I don't know. Yeah, I think that works. Yeah. I think that's very true because um, it just had a different hit on you yeah and i think the shame of it is and again spoiler i don't think john steinbeck plagiarized i don't, I, think, so I don't think so at all um mm. and i think they came to the material with very similar ideas um i think they were probably very politically aligned about it so i don't think it's really surprising that, that they have a lot of the same conclusions um but they get there in very different ways and through very different representations of character and situation yeah. she spends a lot more time in oklahoma 
no. before the characters move over to California. And it's a very different approach. And it, it, it kind of stinks that we are now constantly comparing this to the Grapes of Wrath and the Grapes of Wrath to this, but, you know. But the Four Winds, I don't compare that to the Grapes of Wrath, but it's the same subject, too. True. So, yeah. have you read that one? No, I haven't. Okay, I need it's to, still a good one. Um, your stepmother no, yeah. loved it. Yeah, so I need so, I need to get around to that one. They're all about the Dust Bowl. Um, these are written very similar. Hmm. I don't think she's, she concentrates as much on the travel between Oklahoma and no. California, and John Steinbeck does. A lot on the travel, yeah. And um, so, uh, even the travel is a really a hard... Hmm. Um, listen to it because it's, yeah. it's just sad. And I think that is one thing that kind of, again, I'm comparing, but I feel like a lot of the conversations in the Grapes of Wrath are repetitive. Mm -hmm. Like they would, on, on their journey, they'll stop and they'll talk to people and they say, oh, we're going to California to get work. And people will be like, oh, there's no work in California. And they'll be like, well, we're going to find work in California. And then they'll go on and then they'll have that same conversation. And I think all of the places that they stop, because you're right, the traveling is really important yeah. in that book. And that is something that's not here. Um, I just wish that the conversation beats weren't so similar to get to the, you know, the more important conversation about what the situation was like there. So that's, you know, a minor criticism of The Grapes of Wrath, but... Both good books. I'd yeah. recommend them both. Absolutely. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that this one was pointed out to me because it's a really fantastic book. So, uh, so if The Grapes of Wrath is five, I think this one is fourth or third third on my list okay. but i have to yeah. stay tuned <laughs> um, we'll sort that out and I, like you said i don't take away the grapes of wrath but sonora bab did do an mm -hmm. amazing job writing yeah. this book maybe a little bit cheated i don't know can't say yeah. but i think it's worth a read if you are interested in that subject it's a really good read i think it's especially unfortunate because i feel like nowadays if there was a book that was a wild bestseller and critical success in winning book prizes about a specific topic and you had another author who wrote a great book about the same thing, I feel like people wouldn't cancel publication. They'd try to ride the coattails a little right. bit. And that's clearly not what happened in 1939, which is just unfortunate. Yeah. So, all right. What do you have uh, next? My last book is another very big anticipated mm. read. Um, when Greg first told me about this, it's like, oh my God, that sounds adorable. And I was telling him about it kind of apologizing because usually we talk about book purchases and things like that. I pre-ordered this without telling you about it. So I was like, Hey, I pre-ordered a book. I hope you don't mind. And then I told you about the premise and you're like, I want that now. Oh yes. <laughs> so and, it worked out. Uh, Arthur and Teddy are coming out different Teddy. Um, it's about a father and a grandson who both come out. And I read this for a grandfather and grandson. Oh, I'm sorry. Right, thank yeah. you grandfather and grandson um they both come out and um very different ways and different uh there were some points in here i did not expect and mm -hmm. i'm not gonna give away spoilers but it made the book that much more interesting yeah um we both love the book yeah. i think it hit me i think it had more feels for me but there were a lot of like plot yeah, I think my, my problem with the book is that in some ways you can tell that it's a debut novel and I got a little more hung up on those things than you did. Like, yeah. I still think it's a really great book. I think Ryan Love has it in him to be Matt Cain, yeah. basically. Um, I just think the some of the plotting and characterization in this one was a little bumpier. And I think I also had a little more issue with the grandson as a character. Um Maybe because he reminded me of me a little bit. <laughs> That's probably it. Oh my god, he so, does. Right? Yeah. I just blew his mind. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I I think I got hung up on that. Yeah. So The son's not as lovable as Grandpa. Hmm. Or the grandson's not as lovable as Grandpa. Um, I loved Grandpa. Oh god, amazing. I just loved him. Really amazing. And um, he just really went out and did a lot... But there's some part things that the grandfather does that is supposed to be monumental, and it's like a paragraph in the book. Yeah. And um, it's like, oh. But I loved it. I thought it was fun. It gave me some really good feels. And but, it did give me good feels. But there were a lot of um, yeah holes. It's it's still a good book. I would still recommend it. Um, yeah. 
I think it, it it feels a little more like a guiltier pleasure. I don't really believe in guilty pleasures, but it feels a little more like one just because of the plotting. But actually, I, I still, I really do believe that Ryan Love is has it in him to be Matt King. I think he's going to be very good. Yeah, so. for sure. That's his wheelhouse, and I think he knows yeah. it, and he's headed in that direction. And I would absolutely read his next book. So, yeah. so yeah. I recommend it. I loved it. It's, it's up there with um, Becoming Ted. Um, Becoming Ted probably out does this one but they both made me yeah. laugh cry and i just it just gave me some really good feels yeah and i loved it so. and i think if you've read either albert and whistle or becoming ted you would do just fine with arthur and teddy for yeah. sure so those were my seven books so. all right well i have three more do it we'll get through them pretty quickly yeah. um the next one is yellow face by rf mm. kwong I liked this book a lot, and it, this book is everywhere <laughs> right now. Um, if you're not familiar, I don't know if you're living under a rock or what, but because <laughs> everybody's talking about this book. But basically, the premise is you have this woman who is white, and she is a writer, and she has a friend who is um, of Asian heritage, but uh, is American, uh, and has a much faster road to success. So she's kind of jealous of her friend. Um and she is hanging out with it. They're kind of frenemies. I say friend, but like there's animosity and friendship going on at the same time. They're hanging out. The friend unexpectedly dies. And uh, June, the protagonist of the book, and I protagonist is in quotes, <laughs> um, she steals the manuscript of her friend. And she feels justified in doing this because she, it's a first draft. She sees some problems with it, some areas where it needed, but it's a first draft. So it's like, of course, there are problem areas. But so she polishes it, changes some things and makes it her. She feels she makes it her own. So she doesn't feel guilty about having done this. And it's about representation because it is about very specifically Asian American experiences in World War One. So her publisher also has her change her name. Her name, she goes by June and her last name is Hayward, but her name is actually Juniper Song Hayward. So the publisher has her change her pen name to Juniper Song, so it will sound a little more Asian. Um, and there is a bit of meta in this, because so much of the book is about how, you know, uh, yellow face, like cultural appropriation, is it okay for a white author to write about Asian, Asian or Asian American characters? And um, it's written by R.F. Kuang, who is an Asian American, she's writing a white character. And I, uh, she actually spoke about that in an interview with NPR's Book of the Day. And uh, I thought that was really interesting. So it's a fun book. You kind of, like, June's a terrible person. And um, that if you don't like unlikable characters, that might be a bit of a trigger for you. But um, I thought it wobbled in the end. But it's a fun book. And um, it goes along really quickly. So, you know, it, it was, I'm glad I read it. And, it. and it was a lot of fun. It gives you a lot to think about. So it was interesting. Yeah. You told me a lot about this while reading it. And I think one of the fun parts of this book, which I have not read yet, mm -hmm. and is this a spoiler of how somebody said they it made it feel like the ghost of her was. Yes. No, that's not a spoiler because that's actually in the plot description okay. online. So, so like the ghost of the dead author is haunting this woman and it's really kind of freaky. Yeah. So. And I think that is actually the element that as it gets into the end starts to unravel it for me um because it's sort of like a locked room mystery the setup is always really great but then you have to unravel it and i think the unraveling got a, just a little weak but you know yeah so cool that was that and then i did arthur and teddy are coming out we already talked about that so um i actually skipped a book there was a book that i finished before yellow face oh whoops yes <laughs> You've been this one working on that for a year, a year. over a year yeah. like yeah a year and a half so my journey with the love songs of w.e.b du bois by honore fanon jeffers started in february of 2022 <laughs> and i know that because i never marked it as uh i never took it off of the story graph so for over a year it was just sitting there waiting for me to come back i started it on audio i didn't like the audio then i got it from the library and it was going very slowly through it and so i just decided at that point the paperback release was on the horizon so i returned it to the library, waited for the paperback to come out, and then it took me a year to get back to it. So but I finished you enjoyed it. it when you started. Oh, You're loving it. All along the way. Like, I knew I was going to love this book once I finished it because I was already loving it. When I was, uh, I was about 
a little under halfway through when I put it down to wait for the paperback. Um, and I love it. This is my number one for the year. Oh, really? Yep. Nice. It is. So, I mean, spoiler alert. It's possible something will get in. So here's the thing. The, I don't know what to do with the E.M. Forster read-along. I'll have information about that down below as well. Um, because I love a lot of E.M. Forster books. And I actually just finished one today. So it'll be in my our June wrap-up. But um, there's competition for number one. <laughs> let's just leave it at that. So actually, I haven't really sorted out number one right now. We'll, let's say that. Stay, so that'll be my tease for the end of June. Um, if you are unfamiliar, there are two sort of storylines in this. The first one is... Uh, Ailey Pearl Garfield is born, I think, in 1970, somewhere somewhere thereabout. And she is the protagonist, but then in the other sort of storyline, uh, there will be a section with a quote from W.E.B. Du Bois, and then it will go into the story of her ancestry and how um, how her family is sort of tied to the area where uh, mo the majority of her family still lives and how they came to this point and uh, all, all the... the, the difficulties of moving into um there are native american people there are enslaved people and uh how they get tangled together and how they are there's a plantation where they um the family still lives and that is the plantation that her ancestors um were enslaved and uh it's a really beautiful story about family history and how it shapes who you are it's a story about racism and black feminism which i oh god i love so much about this book the character of Ailey is one of the best realized characters I've ever read. Um, the, her parents are beautifully realized. Her sisters are beautiful. There's not a re an unrealized character in this book. The descriptions are, they can be surprisingly funny, a little bit sassy. And sometimes they're like, Honoré Fanon Jeffers will throw in a bit of potty humor and you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, I just love this book. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Truly tremendous. And... I'm even more upset that it didn't win the Pulitzer last year all over again. It's fantastic. I loved it. Yay. And I can't believe I almost skipped over it. That would have been I know. a crime if I had done yeah, that. I saw it there, so I was like, yeah. when is he going to get to it? So. Yeah, it would have been, yeah, it, we would have realized it. Because then the last book is uh, that I read in May is Trespasses. I mean, cram, cram this in right at the end of the month. I listened to it on audio, but I was loving it. And... Um, I went to our local used bookstore and they had a copy for $10. I was not going to pass that up, so I got it. This is a finalist for the Women's Prize, which will be announced on June 14th. And um, I loved it. I think because it's been on the shortlist for the Women's Prize, a lot of people have read it and formed an opinion about it. Um, it's about the Troubles. Um, I thought it was great. I know this is a bit of a love it or hate it book. I've seen a lot of mixed reaction to it, which does kind of surprise me still. But uh, I thought it was really great. Uh, and again, this is a debut novel, but um, Louise Kennedy, I want to say, is 50, somewhere thereabout. Um, and I f it feels like like Toni Morrison didn't publish, or I don't know when she started writing The Bluest Eye, but she didn't publish it until she was 40. And it feels like when sometimes when you take that amount of time, you really formulate what you want to do as a writer. And this really feels like that. I thought it was fantastic. Nice. Yeah. So that was the last book I read in the month of May. Jamie is staring at us. <laughs> It's almost dinner time. It's almost her dinner time. I did have one DNF. It was Wanderers by Chuck Wendig. I got three hours into a 33-hour audio. And I wasn't into it, so I just decided I, this is not for me right now. I already did a whole video about my Pride Month pile of possibilities, so if anybody wants to know what I'm going to be reading in June, I'm just going to point you to that video down below. What are you thinking of reading oh, in June? Like I'm going to put you on the spot. spot. <laughs> um, so... I am reading The Celebrants mm -hmm. by... Um, Stephen Rowley. Rowley, yeah. Who did The, the Gunkle. Gunkle. Yeah, I, and I love The Gunkle, so I'm doing The Celebrants. And it's a little... And everybody compares it to The Big Chill. That's mm -hmm. exactly what it is. But it's five college friends who lose a friend uh, back in college. And they made a pact at that point that when one of them ever gets like at total bottom they call call out the pack to do a funeral for them and so they're doing a funeral for a friend right now but as you're going through the getting up to this um fake funeral you're finding out about all the other characters mm -hmm. and um the characters aren't lovable but i don't think they're supposed to be lovable mm -hmm. 
um, that are hard to relate to, but I think it's going to turn out into something really good. Yeah. Um, I, it's not, it's going to be a sad book. I have a feeling. So yeah. I, it's about funerals. True. So, um, <laughs> is there anything else in the month of June? That I, you might do you want, to I do want to do, uh, my government's trying to kill me. Mm, uh, I think that's on, on your list yes. too. Um, I am doing, uh, it's a fifth book in a series on a male for male romance mm -hmm. for me. So I'm doing it for a little fluff at night before bed. Um, I am going to do full circle. It's right up here. Yeah. Michael Thomas Ford. Um, it's a book that I read years ago that really, really hit me and I loved it. Same. Uh, it's about a gay man who goes through 40 decades of his life. Uh, um, four decades. <laughs> yeah, sorry, four <laughs> but, decades. Yeah. <laughs> It's about a man who goes through four decades of his life um, through war, AIDS, um, just everything. I think so, he's born in 1950. 50s, yeah. Yeah. And it's he has a best friend who grows up with him who is also gay. And so it's, they both go through all of history Together. in the almost Forrest Gumpish, but like a gay Forrest Gump <laughs> minus the um, cognitive disability. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, but it, it is a really good read when I read it, but I'm rereading it for Pride Month. Um, I got a couple of other Pride books. I'm sorry. I'm totally blank on them right now. No, it's okay. Because I think I gave myself a lot of options, and I think you were doing the same thing. We're yeah. keeping plans a little bit loose for Pride yeah. Month, so yeah. it is what it is. And I know uh, both of us were thinking about reading Stone Butch Blues by Leslie Feinberg, but because it's part of the Queer TBR Tackle, I claimed it. That's fine. <laughs> so... I'm good. It's probably going to be the next book that I start. And if I finish it in time and if I like it, then you might. Yeah, I'll jump into jump it. Jump on. Um, but no promises. So, but, um, It's a book that I've wanted to read for a while. So yeah. uh, I'm excited about that. Yeah. And um, I think that's about it. I think that's about it. Yeah. Happy Pride to everybody. Happy Pride to everybody. Yeah. Um, we have, we're filming this on a Sunday. It's the first, like, actually hot day. Got my iced coffee here. Uh, we took Jamie for a walk. I'm like covered in sunscreen. Um, so I hope you've been having a good weekend, although you'll be seeing this during the week. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, so and enjoy Pride. Yeah. yeah. So we'll do our uh, month end wrap up and yes. our Pride wrap up, and then we'll do our top. Yeah, our top, top of the year. year. So you're going to see a lot of Joel by the end of June. And uh, we didn't even talk about the um, drag queen story hour that we did. No. No, we didn't. Uh, I mean, I talked about it on a Friday Reads, but you were there. <laughs> I was. You were. We, act we actually got on Rachel Maddow, too. So yeah. um, I was really glad that we went and supported the stores, gave people, the people side of us, we we're like, out. we outnumbered the white supremacists mm -hmm. by three to one, yeah. probably. And uh, I'm just sorry there's so much hate out there. Yeah. I am having a hard time dealing with all the hate and all the political stuff. And I'm sorry that a lot of our community has to go through this, mm -hmm. but I'm glad to see so many people fighting mm -hmm. for um, just acceptance and fighting the bills, fighting the hate. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's nice that people show up for other people yes. in the community. So. so we have two prides coming up in our state. Yeah. So we're going to be doing those prides. Yeah. Montana used to have one pride and they would rotate city around the all the different cities in the state. Um, but now a couple of cities host their own pride. Mm -hmm. So Bozeman had their pride and that's where we were for those drag story hours. Missoula's pride is coming up and then Helena's is at the end of July, beginning of August. August. So the kind of space, it becomes like a summer pride, which is actually, Yeah, it's fun. It is fun. So every so. weekend we get to go somewhere different for a pride. So, yeah. so yeah, we're going to get support. Yep. So. And we'll keep doing that. Yeah. And hope you do as well. Yeah. That's May. And we're already That's into May. June. We're in June. We're into June. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, as always, we really appreciate your time. Thank and you. We'll be back. And until next time, happy reading. Bye.